Great magazines are a balance of good content and design. Delivering content in a cohesive and interesting way, it's important to drive up sales and provide for a unique experience for the readers. Hi, my name is Laura Kyung and I am an editorial and brand designer with 15 years of experience. In this course, we will talk about 10 tips that you can use to take a regular magazine to a high-end one. I'll be showing you visuals and templates from Envato Elements, a great resource for high-quality templates, graphics, photographs, fonts, and much, much more. We will touch on how less is more when it comes to magazines, how to get creative with contents pages, what to do when you don't have a high-resolution image on hand, how to get playful with typography, how to take advantage of colors and spreads. At the end of this course, you will have specific tools that will help you confidently design great magazines with powerful impact. Let's get started. Most readers buy magazines based on cover designs. So presenting a stunning one can entice them to keep coming back and purchase the same magazine over and over again. While yes, good content is key, covers have just a second to convince the readers to pick them up. In this lesson, we will take a look at what makes a great cover design, what elements you need, and some tips for improvement. So magazines are a whole package. It's the pages and the covers, front and back. But the good magazines, the really good ones, have aesthetically pleasing covers. So the key here is to create a balance between all of the elements. That will be the heading and one or two subheadings, maybe a call out and a really good image. That would be either a photograph or a graphic. So let's take a look at some great examples from Envato Elements and we can expand on this a little bit more. In this first example, you will see that there is layered typography and photography. This is a great way to grab attention. So on this cover, the name of the magazine is short, but spread across the whole cover in an impactful color. Here, typography takes a priority. The photography is small and in contrast to the red in black and white. This creates a nice balance to let the heading shine. Any other callout or subheading is concise and to the point because it doesn't need to compete with any of the other elements on the cover. Let's talk a little bit more about divisions. And this is another great way to design a cover. On this particular cover, the designer divided the cover horizontally to spread information. And you can see that there is a grid here that's being worked on. Bright colors are essential to make a magazine stand out. Here we can also see layered typography. A couple of the subheadings are over the heading, but this is done in a very clean manner that still allows the reader to make out the subheadings. The middle part is used for other smaller subheadings and the principal photography at the very bottom. While the space is not your traditional photography ratio, it steals call for attention by providing some heaviness at the bottom, and that helps anchor the cover down. Minimalism has been around for decades, and this is another great tool for magazine cover designs. So in this case, the photography matches the format of the book, and it is placed just slightly lower than the midline. The only elements on this cover are the heading, so magazine information, and photography. And let's notice here how the sizing of the content plays with a hierarchy. The name of the magazine is bigger, and the other information like photography is smaller. The cover divides the title into two to add more visual contrast and to engage the viewer, while the other less important information goes on either side of the photograph. In this next example, we see graphic elements as an alternative for strong cover designs. In this case, bright yellow graphic elements are just sprinkled around the cover, but with purpose. There is a yellow element next to the heading, another around the photograph, which also includes text in the same color. This is a great way to also highlight important information or catchy subheadlines. And last but not least, strong photography. This is key, especially if we will occupy all of the cover design. So if you have a high resolution image that you can use on a whole cover, that is great. In this case, the photograph is strong in color and composition. 
The magazine headline uses the same color as the subject on the photograph. It is important to repeat a few elements so it can create cohesiveness. The subheadline occupies the bottom left corner of the cover as to create a subdued element that doesn't interfere with the rest. The yellow circle outline also helps to bring attention to a specific part of the photograph. In this lesson, I showed you simple tips that you can use to improve your magazine cover designs. The key here is to find balance between all of the elements, and that would be the headline, subheadline, illustration or photograph, and colors. In the next lesson, we will take a look at minimalism in magazine design. I'll see you there. Minimalism can be applied in many different ways, especially in magazine design, and we often undervalue how this style can work in our favor. In this lesson, we will talk about many ways in which you can apply minimalism to create an interesting and high-end layout. So minimalism provides us with a blank canvas, not only for the designer, but also for the readers. For us designers, it allows us to only display what's important on a page, the most important elements, the key elements. And for the readers, it gives them a more balanced and less overwhelming publication. A few ways in which you can use minimalism are by limiting your color palette or your typography choices, sometimes in the composition of photography. And if we are taking consideration of everything in how many elements you should include on a spread or a single page. So let's take a look at some awesome examples from Envato Elements and we can talk a little bit more. So in this magazine layout design, we can see minimalism across the spread. The left page contains only a photograph and the running head, the most minimal amount of elements that also creates impact. On the right page, we can see a large amount of white space that's broken up by a few text elements and a small photograph. The placement of these items go hand in hand with the subject on the image on the left. That's to create a symmetrical balance across the spread. So key here is to have a large amount of white space and let the elements breathe. For this next example, let's take a look at this cover design. Minimalism is applied in different ways and the light pink color is used for emphasis while the black and white photography creates a contrast. You will notice also that there is a sans serif typography flush to the right in line with a photograph this creates a nice amount of white space on the opposite side. The quarter circle graphic element at the top on the back cover resembles that haircut on the subject from the picture and it acts as a counterweight for the elements on the bottom left corner. It also helps with the balance and makes the viewer eyes jump around the dark elements. And without the pink element here, the cover would look too plain. That's one of minimalism risks. Things can look underdesigned, but it can also be easily solved. Another beautiful example of extreme minimalism in design is this all white cover. While the layout may seem simple, there is definitely design thinking applied. So this magazine uses just a few elements, the most important, and uses photography and style to bring in the viewers. The magazine description is across the top of the cover, while the photograph creates weight at the bottom to anchor the cover. And also let's talk about this minimalist photography. It is simple. The magazine headline is not aligned to the text up top, nor the photograph. Instead, it breaks the strict grid to create visual tension, and this creates a tension from our eyes. And just like cover design here, the key is to find balance. In this particular design, across the spread we can see the folio's consistency on both pages. By the placement of the elements, we can deduce that there is a five column grid. And from there, as long as the elements are aligned to a column, there will be a sense of order. It is important to figure out first the amount of elements that will go on a page, especially when you're working with smaller images. In this case, the left-hand side page contains only two typographic elements. The big text goes towards the spine, and while this page has less elements, it creates balance against the multiple smaller images on the opposite page. 
the left page is also much simpler compared to the overlapping elements and multiple colors on the right page. While there is multiple photographs, uniformity is created by using the same photo treatment with the red overlay. So we can say that there is a lot going on, but not really, because the style of the photograph is repeated, the same font is used, only in different colors just to add that pop. In this lesson, we took a look at how you can use minimalism to design an ultra simple, super elegant, high-end magazine. You can limit the color palette, your typography choices, or even the style of photography, or even all of those elements together on a page to create a masterfully cohesive design. As long as everything looks balanced and there is enough white space to breathe, you're doing a great job. In the next lesson, we will take a look at how you can spice up a contents page. I'll see you there. The contents page is one of the first sections readers will take a look at when they open a magazine, but it is often one that designers leave for last to design. So in this lesson, we will take a look at how to design a creative contents page with bold and impactful staying power. When readers open a magazine, they look at the contents page first to scan the contents of the magazine. So the purpose of a contents page is functional. is It is to provide a information in a cohesive and organized manner. But that doesn't mean that we should drop the ball in the creativity because this section is so unique. This is where we can actually get creative. And this section doesn't really repeat after uh, throughout the magazine. So there are different ways to get creative here. And one of them is by using the same grid as the rest of the magazine, but giving it a different treatment. It can be by using bigger photography or giving it a different treatment to the photography, bolder typography, bigger typography, different colors or different graphic elements that will just spice it up a little. So let's take a look at some creative examples from Envato Elements. So talking about grids, grids are essential for magazine design. And one way of working creatively within a grid is by using each compartment as if it were a puzzle. In this example, the designer extended certain rows and columns to create hierarchy within the articles. So the articles on pages 12 and 25 are more important than smaller articles at the beginning of the publication. You will notice that also the photographs have a similar treatment, and that's because throughout a magazine, there are different photographers that will be working on different articles, so they will have different editing styles. Adding a color overlay on the contents page can help create cohesiveness. Not only that, but when readers open this page, it will be impactful. On this second example, we see the contents page extended to be a spread. This is another great way to take advantage of space. If you have more white space, there is more breathing room. While there is a grid as a base here, the designer broke out the rule by overlaying the elements. The text over the photographs break the neat design from the other elements. So this is a great way to add an interesting detail. The photographs vary in sizes. So to do this successfully, you can use multiple, a multiple column grid. And in this case, there are six columns to play around with. As long as you try to align things to each other, everything will look organized. If you're looking to work with the color palette of your magazine, you can use this to your advantage by including them in the contents page too. So a magazine is a brand after all. So in most cases, magazines have an editorial letter from the chief or editor in chief. Here it is included with the contents page at the very top on the right side. And the rest of the content is placed at the bottom. Using the color palette of the magazine will just create a pop in this section. This super creative content page breaks every traditional rule from design. So different format images, the number elements are exaggerated, a grid seems to be non-existent, but the elements do make sense. So the beauty of design is that it can be explorative. And in this case, it is also successful. 
bold numbers grouped with images and a good amount of white space is a recipe for good design. And this last example is perfect to bring it back to clarity and organization. If you aren't so sure about how to go about creating a contents page, maybe start with laying out all of the content first. And then from there, you can try out different type sizes, maybe adding other elements. In this case, is a thick stroke, maybe making the elements like the typeface or the font a little bit different or bigger. Something as easy as having a different color background will also make this section pop because not every page in the rest of the magazine will have the same background. So in this lesson, you learned creative tips that will help you design a contents page that will really stand out from the rest of the magazine. While it is supposed to be functional, yes, but it also should be creative because this section doesn't repeat again. So it is your one chance to really explore design creatively. In the next lesson, we'll talk about graphics in magazine design. I'll see you there. As magazine designers, we know how important it is to have high resolution, high quality photographs. But sometimes that's just not an option, either because our budget doesn't allow it or sometimes the photographer that we want isn't available. So in this lesson, we will talk about how you can use vector in your magazine design layout. Vectors are a great option to use because they can be resized and recolored in every which way possible. And when it comes to photographs and articles, sometimes photographs won't get the concept of the article across. So using a, an illustration is a great idea, especially if you're looking for a fantastical look. But the big plus out of all of this is that you can resize these vectors as much as you want without worrying about the print quality it will still look good when you print it. So let's take a look at some creative examples from Envato Elements on how you can use vectors. So in this example, easy vector graphics can help fill white space by connecting to other images or even enhance the look of a page by extending this photographs to the other spread. From the branding perspective, magazine brand colors can be applied to graphics for a strong branded publication you can also use the photograph's color palette on the graphic elements. Vector graphics work great not only on the inside spreads, but also on the cover and back cover. So if you want to add a special something to a magazine cover, but the photograph you're using doesn't quite allow it, venture into using vectors. In this case, the vector graphics bleed to the back, creating a bigger piece of design than just the cover. Try things like filled in elements or outline off the grid, explore different compositions that can take a normal cover to a next level cover. On this next example, vector elements don't have to just be shapes, they can also be typography. So using typography as a graphic element can look bold and explorative and out of the ordinary. So in this case, the letters are rotated and the text that act as a quote can also be considered another element, and that is more an image than readable content. Pair all of this with an amazing image, layered graphics, and it is a recipe for a great spread. Going to the opposite side of color, a strong black and white cover can really stand out on a magazine rack. Many magazines opt to go for a colored cover. In this case, black and white can look super fashionable. If you want to keep it black and white, play with different opacities on the graphic elements, let them be part of the image, and think of ways on how the element can interact with it. It just adds another layer of thoughtfulness to a cover design. On this last example, the vector graphic interacts with the photograph in a way to enhance it more. So big type can be readable and also interact with other design elements. In this case, the corners of the shape over the image point to certain elements on purpose. This is so the reader's eyes can be directed to certain copy and entice them to read it. While the spread is bright yellow, the photograph is kept subdued in black and white, and the white stroke shape is non-intrusive, I think a successful and thoughtful spread. So in this lesson, you'll learn how to use vectors in place of photographs when budget doesn't allow to use them, and how to use vectors 
to enhance photographs and other graphic elements on a spread, on a page, cover, or even back cover. In the next lesson, we will talk all about infographics. I'll see you there. Editors provide us with information and it is our job as designers to organize this information in an exciting way that readers actually want to read it. So in this lesson, we will talk all about infographics, their influence, and how we can create engaging and exciting layouts with these visuals. So infographics are great to break up heavy text and heavy subjects. It's easier for readers to digest information visually. In the era of text-heavy layouts is really in the past. Magazines like National Geographic or Esquire are now using infographics to create exciting layouts. So let's take a look at some awesome examples from Envato Elements and see how you can use these visuals to up the level on your magazine design. Let's start with a simple infographic on a spread. It is easy to read. It can hold so much information in a very interactive way. And the color scheme can always be adjusted to match the branding of the magazine or the article. If you're looking for something more illustrative, that is a great way to not be too plain, to still have the reader be engaged, and it is eye-catching. These types of infographics also allow for off-the-grid elements that can be fun to design, almost like a puzzle. And not only that, but it's also a great opportunity to break out the seriousness of a magazine or an article. The flat style illustration came in full force and influenced much of the graphics on magazines. Infographics rely on colors, forms, and typography to communicate. So in this case, typography is part of a graphic element rather than just information. These are very different shapes compared to the infographics from a couple of examples ago, where the shapes were pretty standard. And again, infographics don't need to be tricky to create. Simple symbols can get the point across. Like on this spread, it explains a process while also being visually clear. It is digestible, especially if it comes down to complex concepts. And last, if you want to take it to the extreme, this awesome looking graphic is intricate and a graphic lover would love deciphering it through. This graphic is suitable for information heavy content that needs to be displayed in a more interesting way than just heavy paragraphs. This would be perfect for something, an article related to the digital world. So in this lesson, I show you great ways in which you can use infographics to create engaging and attractive layouts. It is our job as designers to present information in an organized and digestible way for the reader. So. Infographics are a great way to break up heavy text and heavy subjects. In the next lesson, we will talk all about how to get creative with typography. I'll see you there. Typography is one of the most important elements in magazine design, and specific fonts will give off very specific personalities. Based on the magazine that you're designing for, uh, and based on its theme, you will be able to narrow down your typographic choices. So in this lesson, we will talk about how you can turn typography into a very creative graphic. You have heard it before, serves are traditional and sans serifs are modern, but nowadays you can also find serifs that are very modern and very cool. And in magazine design, while yes, the text needs to be readable and the size is very important. There are also ways in which we can take typefaces and maybe make them bigger or use them in different colors so they can enhance our design and use them more as graphic elements rather than just displaying content. So we will take a look at some awesome examples from Envato Elements, awesome magazine templates that are using typography in very cool ways and a couple of fonts that maybe you can use for your next project. Let's take a look. In this first example, this all caps sans serif is eye-catching, not only because it's large size, but also the color. And it is superimposed against the photograph. This typographic element adds balance by being positioned at the bottom of the spread. It anchors it to the bottom and it's breaking the rule 
by not only being on a single page, but considering the whole spread. It is quite impactful. This second example features a large sans serif font that's used for longer content that bleeds off the page at the top and the bottom. This is a very bold move because it disrupts traditional design rules. Not only the type size is big, but also the text is very narrow, the column. My favorite feature here is the big O in white that counteracts the whitewash photograph on the opposite side. We have seen how large typography borders the lines of content and graphic content. And in this case, this large typography is not only informing, but it's also a visual component of the spreads. For instance, art, it is placed right on the gutter of the magazine. It is a bold move, but also helps break up the heaviness of the page. The fact that the word is at 90 degrees, it completely changes the direction of the magazine. So instead of having portrait pages, we can flip the magazine and now we have landscape pages. So the canvas truly switches from one format to another. Let's look at a few fonts. This font is a modern display serif that can look awesome to open an article spread. Display fonts can act as graphic elements just because they have that extra design detail that makes them look apart from the regular serifs or sans serif fonts. Something more readable like this sans serif font is great for display or even longer forms of text, quotes. It has an old style 1930s look that can help enhance a magazine design. You can use it for a single article or as the main for a magazine because of that old style flair. And last but not least, for something more alternative is this font, the perfect balance of serif, think of Dido and expressive typography. So the wavy details make it perfect for a fashion magazine, a sports article may be focused on water or ocean, river, perhaps flowy 70s style and interior design. There are so many possibilities really. The font does have a very specific vibe. It's loose and easy, feminine, elegant, but can be applied to so many different articles. In this lesson, I show you different ways in which you can use typography as a graphic element to enhance a spread or a design to feature quotes. And the days of serves and sans serves, this division is long gone. Um, you can use now serves as sans serif and vice versa. In the next lesson, we will talk about all about photography for magazines and how you can take advantage of high resolution photographs. I'll see you there. If you're fortunate enough to have access to high end or high quality photography, be sure you're taking advantage of that. In this lesson, I will show you ways in which you can take advantage of high resolution images to create powerful layouts. The magazines that benefit from this the most are travel, nature, and fashion. There are many more, but, but these are the main ones. And sometimes they set up photo shoots to have access to these high resolution images. But these days there are plenty of resources like Envato Elements and you have access to a vast library of photographs for a very small monthly fee. This library is big and they have different composition images with different compositions and different colors. So really there is a lot to choose from. Let's take a look at some examples. If the image allows, don't be afraid to enlarge it as much as possible for it to bleed out off the page. This will create great, great impact. Some of the best magazines, especially large format magazines, tend to spread a single photo on a spread and sometimes even a single page. Take advantage of the color and the composition. If you have a large enough image, try to create a composition with the other elements of the cover or the page. In this case, the boat is half out of the page, challenging traditional rules of cover designs where everything should be centered. The rest of the elements just sort of rest on top of the cover, letting the image just do its thing. If you're looking for interesting way to show a photograph, try rotating them to add a different effect. 
if you're confined to a landscape photograph, you can still use it on a portrait direction style cover. While this cover uses a landscape image, it tries to be eye-catching by flipping it upside down. And on a rack of magazine, it forces the reader to take a second glance and try to figure out what's going on. On this particular cover, the image is the main feature. It's supported by traditional details like the magazine name and small line of text. When using a high quality image such as this one, there is the option to crop it really tight, meaning that you can zoom in as much as the image allows you to, and this will create a lot of impact. In this case, the face of the subject is the main feature. While the image is dark, the lighter points of the image are enhanced by the red color. And to create a cohesive cover, the name of the magazine is also in the same color as the highlights of the image. Another great cover where photography is the main feature and the cover lines are in a smaller size. This vibrant image uses color as its main focal point and the subject plus the shadow break the strong composition. Images like this are great when you want to create structure and a little bit of spontaneity within the same image. Another key aspect of composition is leading lines. These lines are a great way to lead readers to the next page or to a specific element on a page. In this case, the cover image features a photograph with a wavy facade that sort of grows and floats to the right. This sort of leading lines entices the reader to open the magazine or to go to the next page if it's used inside. As we've seen, strong composition, bold colors, and a really good concept are very important for photography on top of having high resolution, high quality images that you can really display on a magazine. In this lesson, you learned ways in which you can display these photographs to keep your readers engaged and wowed as they turn every page. In the next lesson, we'll take a look at consistency in magazine design. I'll see you there. Developing a language for a specific design is key to transmit specific personality traits and organizations. Magazines need to have some kind of consistency so the pages look like they all belong together. In this lesson, we will talk about how you can create consistency and how you can create a visual language for a magazine. So there are a couple of ways to do this. And one of them is by using the same fonts and the same colors at the front and inside the magazine. So when readers look at the cover and then they look at the interior, they need to see some kind of correlation. And fonts and colors are easy because you can just repeat them inside the magazine on headlines, subheadlines, folios, and even photographs. Another way to achieve consistency is grid and style. So a grid is just an invisible tool that designers use to organize graphic elements and you can use the same grid all throughout the magazine. So if you're breaking the grid, try to do the same on maybe a couple of the pages or throughout the magazine. If you're using a specific style photograph or the shape of a photograph, for instance, um, circle photographs, try to repeat this throughout the magazine. So there is a correlation there. Let's take a look at some awesome creative examples from Envato Elements. So the inside of this first example features the same colors that are on the cover headline. The same color is not only used on typography, but also on different graphic elements that help add a special something to the page. The inside of a magazine can be used to unfold the cover design to show the reader how the design expands. You'll also notice that the different images take on different shapes. While the shape is different, the shape difference is repeated throughout the spreads. The last element here is the font choice. This is used not only as a static headline at the top left, but it is also used slanted to add movement to the pages. And we can see that it's used twice. So there is this consistency that helps tie everything together. And it doesn't need to be complicated. So repeating elements in different sizes, outside and inside, can add so much personality. Here we have a cover design that features graphic elements floating around and different sharp shapes. 
we can also see an outline of triangles in a neat composition at the bottom right of the cover. On the inside page, the same shapes are featured, but also taken to the next level by adding a photograph within the triangles. While the rest of the composition is left clean, the triangles, colors, and outline just spice things up. Another simple example of how to create consistency is this amazing magazine. This template does it by using the same black, white, and yellow colors, same typeface. In this case, the composition needs to be a bit more daring to counteract the simple colors and font. So the same circular shape is also used within the inside pages. This is a great way to train the reader. Say every time there is a circle, then there is a quote. So that's how you slowly develop a visual language. And even minimalist magazines need consistency. In this case, big images, white space, and font are key. The same font is used on the cover design, while the same style of photo display is used on the inside. So if you have the advantage of working with high resolution images and you can use them full bleed, do that because it creates such an impact on the reader. Plus it makes taking the photographs worth it. The way we display quotes can also be another way to create consistency and a visual language. In this case, quotes are in a white rectangle with a black stroke around it. The page number is also displayed on the bottom and center of the page. This type of consistency is not only good for the eyes, but keeps the reader informed. As we have seen, consistency doesn't need to be complicated. In this lesson, you learned different tips and tricks on how you can create consistency from the front cover to the inside pages. This will only help you create a stronger visual language and a solid magazine. In the next lesson, we will take a look at how you can design not only pages, but spreads. The canvas just gets bigger and bigger. I'll see you there. So typical magazines are often read page by page, but we don't really take in consideration the experience of the reader that when they turn the page, they are met with a full on spread. So in this lesson, we will talk about how you can incorporate design into a spread to create an impactful and creative look. One of the things that you need to keep in mind when designing a spread is the amount of information you put on it. We don't want to overwhelm the readers with the amount of information, how heavy the information is, or maybe images. So while yes, it can have an impactful and creative look and has that wow factor for readers that makes them want to turn page after page, we still have to be careful about how we design it. So let's take a look at creative and beautiful template examples from Envato Elements. Let's take a look at the example on the top right. We can see that there is a leading line to lead the viewer to the next page, but it also bleeds into the picture. So if you happen to have a high quality image that can be used larger than just a single page, take advantage of that to create impact and extend it to the next page. That will make the reader think that you're designing as spreads. There is nothing more eye-catching than a large image, a high quality image. Let's take a look at the spread at the bottom right. And this image bleeds off the page and continues on the edge of the opposite page. Breaking this type of continuity is unexpected, yet it feels what it would be too much white space. This type of detail can be considered a leading element as it makes the reader want to turn the page to see what comes next. Multiple images on one spread need not only to make sense, but also the designer needs to figure out which is the main image and which are supporting. In this case, we can say that there is a breakfast recipe based on berries. While the main image is of a composed dish, the rest of the images are the different ingredients. So since they have a supporting role, they can be displayed smaller or cropped tightly to emphasize the shape of the berries. If the circle image had been on a single page, there would be a disconnect between it and the other images. So in this case, they are layered and they are arranged on a spread as a base rather than a single page. You will also notice that the circle image is not centered to the spread. This is because the two images on the right side create a balance against the left side image, 
therefore creating balance and harmony. That's always priority. This next example is subtle and it has to do more with the background grid in which the photographs are arranged. The center line of this composition is not on the gutter, but just slightly to the right of the spine. So it shifts the whole magazine slightly, but it also considers the pages as spread and not separate pages. The page numbers and folios support the explorative nature of the magazine, as well as using different direction for the headline. The headline is being used to balance the multiple photographs on the left side of the page. This last example features multiple images and one of them leads towards the right page. On this specific design, as little as possible of the image is on the actual spine. This is done to preserve the integrity of the image. While the images on the left are cropped, the big one on the right is more airy but used at a bigger size. So it helps fill that white space but also balance the heaviness of the cropped images. So in this lesson, you learned how to use photographs and grids to design spreads and get out of that one page traditional box through the use of graphic elements and always keeping balance as priority number one. You can design spreads that are engaging and powerful for your readers. In the next lesson, we will talk about how you can use bold colors in magazine design. I'll see you there. Using a single pop of color is better than using a whole rainbow of colors. So in this lesson, we will take a look at how you can incorporate bold colors into your magazine to enhance your design. A single striking color can be really powerful, especially if you're using black and white photography or if you're designing a minimalist magazine. A single color can help you not only create a visual language, but also create a connection with the reader. So when the reader sees this specific color, they can think of you. When we talk about bold colors, we're not only talking about bright colors, but also soft colors. So let's take a look at some examples from Envato Elements. They have many, many templates that you can use or find inspiration from. So let's go and take a look. Let's start with this beautiful example. So bold colors don't need to be loud. This combination, while it is soft, it is still eye-catching. So to use white instead of the black, it would have been too soft on the soft background. And in this case, black is a great choice. Using soft colors also keeps the magazine minimalist and subdued. In some instances, that's good, especially if the theme of the magazine is about topics like minimalist fashion or if the magazine has an easy going personality. Bold colors don't need to be just solid, they can also be gradients. And in this case, the magazine uses mostly black and white, but to bring up a pop of color, the designer used multiple gradients on the inside and outside. In this case, it is in this case it is important not to overdo it as it can be not only overwhelming but also confusing for the reader. So creating a set of gradients that just repeat themselves in the magazine is the best way to go. On this third example, we can see that the magazine features black and white photography and two colors that complement each other. There's this yellow, almost gold color and a light blue. These are complementary colors. They're opposite on the wheel of color so they can create a nice contrast. These are also subdued shades and soft that transmit a classy and higher-end magazine. If the colors were bold, the magazine would be edgy, loud, or maybe even for a younger audience. This sports magazine features one pop of color, so the photography is kept in black and white, very simple, but the bold color is superimposed on the photograph. And the same photographic treatment is used on the rest of the interior of the magazine. So this helps create consistency. Also, the minimalist style of the column on the left is repeated inside the magazine. Last but not least, we have bold colors that are bright and loud. Depending on the magazine, this is useful. In this case, it is a sports magazine that can be focused on biking or cycling. Depending on the audience, this is where a case study is useful. You can narrow down which colors are suitable. In this case, 
cycling gear tends to be bright and loud, dynamic, and that's conveyed here on the cover. Not only on the graphic shapes, but also on the placement in colors. This color palette consists of three colors that complement each other, and that is also extended on the inside. So without these colors and shapes, the magazine can look very minimalist and borderline underdesigned. So the interiors are successfully designed to convey the same feeling as the cover. In this lesson, I show you how you can use a single pop of color to enhance your design. This single pop of color doesn't only have to be bright, it can also be soft, but as long as it is distinctive and unique to you, you will create a relationship with your reader. So when they see this color outside of the magazine, they can relate back to you. This is the last lesson of this course, and on the next video, I will show you a recap of everything we learned on this course. I'll see you there. Gray magazines are designed with the reader in mind and balance as priority. Delivering content in a cohesive and organized way can help you have readers come back to you over and over again. In this course, we looked at 10 tips that can help you take a normal magazine to the next level. We looked at everything from how to enhance your cover design, how to design a content page, how to use bold colors, creative typography, high resolution photography, all of this so you can use these tools for your next project and create a really good design. If you're looking for templates, to build on or customize, be sure to check out Envato Elements. It is a great resource with templates and photographs, fonts. There are so many different assets that you can find there for your next project. If you're new to design, be sure to check out our course on InDesign for Beginners. You can find so many tips and tricks there that can help you get started. My name is Laura Kyung, and from all of us at Envato, thank you for watching.